Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So, you know, I want to talk to you about our freedom and our liberty. We should celebrate our freedom and be thankful to God for it. God created us as humans free with choice. Otherwise, we would be robots and we would all still be in the garden. Now, being in the garden would be good, but being robots would not be so good. So I think it's good to celebrate July 4th. It's our Independence Day for the nation. Regardless of what others might try to say nowadays, this nation was founded in godly principles. The founding fathers were primarily Christian. Christian principles and God are widely acknowledged throughout the documentation of time. This belief in God was the norm in those days and has been for a long time. One of the panels of the Jefferson Monument, I think it's the third one, says this, God who gave us life gave us liberty. Can the liberties of a nation be secure when we have removed a conviction that these liberties are the gift of God? Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. Commerce between master and slave is despotism. Nothing is more certainly written in the book of fate than that these people are to be free. It shows that he was current concerned, Thomas Jefferson was concerned for the country, that perhaps they were forgetting God. His concerns are not greatly different from our own. We worry about wrong and moral things we see being done in this country. If we as a nation stop believing in God, stop following God, Will we not lose our freedom? Because God is the source of our liberty. Paul said this about our new covenant and liberty in the Lord. Now the Lord, this is Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now these are two different types of liberty spiritual and the natural or physical, but both stem from God. Our country has been blessed by God and made very successful, even though, as Jefferson worried, it was an injustice that we had slavery in this country. We were not a perfect nation. Even then, we had flaws. As a comparison, through the Lord, we are blessed with liberty and freedom from the rule of sin. Even though we as Christians are not perfect, we are still flawed. So we should thank God for both liberties that we enjoy. We are so blessed to live in such a country that was founded in godly ideals. Now, in the case of both liberties, we need to be aware there are those who would take them from us. There are those in the natural and in the spiritual. In comparing the two covenants, the old with the new, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Now, Paul was talking about them not falling into the old law of sin and death. We do not want to be tied to that sin or held captive by it. Instead, we want to accept the freedom that Jesus bought us. You might remember a number of places and congregations in the New Testament that had issues with Jews and other groups that wanted to promote false teachings that would remove or hinder the very freedom that Christ had won us. We also have those in the natural today as well. We have those who promote themselves as forward thinkers who say that if we do not agree with them, we are automatically racist or other such things. They would restrict our freedoms, silence our voices if they could. A lot of these do not believe in our Christian values or God's word. They say our belief in God's word is wrong, that our convictions over truth are wrong, all because it does not line up with their viewpoint. Paul advised Timothy about those false teachers in his time. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3-5 through 5. 
If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil, suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. We see this even today, where people just make a business of the gospel. They just want to see how rich they can get. Who are they really serving? Then the very same can be said of these people who claim to be liberal-minded. Now, I don't really think you're very liberal-minded when all you want to do is restrict others, but that's what they claim. But these people, some of them collect a lot of money from their followers, then they go and spend that money selfishly on themselves. Usually in a way that is directly conflicting with the beliefs that they have claimed they have. So who are they really serving? In both cases, they are really serving themselves. So Paul's advice about false teachers actually applies to both in the spiritual and the natural. Another problem we see is this. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. We have people who are calling evil things good and good things evil. Just as an example of how silly it has gotten, they are calling men women and women men. And some people are accepting that, even though it has no basis in logic or reason. Here, the spiritual and the natural collide for us because we cannot agree with dishonesty. These are also people who are the false teachers of our time, whether it be those that are money-serving pretenders to the gospel or the power-hungry or money-serving liberal-minded people they claim to be liberal-minded or humanitarians. All of these would teach our children and us falsely if we let them. They are acting for their own benefit or their own gain, and they believe they are themselves wise. Sadly, Satan has these people. They are deceived. So what do we do? Well, the first thing to do is to make sure we speak and act in truth. We must stand for the Lord in his truth. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Meaning that we're to truly love in deed and in truth, we're not just to, you know, give it lip service. Sometimes we must speak the truth in love, even when people don't want to hear it. It's not what they want. They just want us to agree with them, and we just can't do that. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we must refuse to agree with or bound to, bow down to these evil untruths. It can be difficult. And the truth is not always nice and pretty. But telling a woman that she can be a man if she chooses, it just promotes a lie. That lie is very destructive because it reinforces and enables behavior and choices that will damage the woman. The same if you tell a man he can be a woman. They will both, if they believe that, they could both go and get surgeries and really hurt themselves. The truth, especially God's truth, is the better option. And there is a proverb for this, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. These people will hurt themselves. You know, we gave up our freedom once. In Adam, we turned from God to slavery and sin. We believed a lie. We do not want to go back down that path again. Instead, we want to promote the freedom we have in Jesus. If you look at Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the freedom Jesus read of in the synagogue and then told them that it was fulfilled. We are no longer captives of sin or oppressed. We have been given the greatest freedom there is. We have the freedom of choice. We have the freedom to walk with God and the Lord. We can't put our faith in people or political parties. You know both parties have had power at different times, and both could have eliminated abortion if they wanted to. Neither did. Pay attention to actions, not rhetoric, not just empty promises, but pay attention to what these people really do. Here Jesus was speaking of false prophets, but it easily applies to all of us, of all of our actions. Matthew chapter 7, verses 16 through 18. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So we must keep our faith and eyes on the Lord, not man. Now James explains why we have been so blessed as a country. James chapter 1 verse 25, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Because we have been a nation of doers, taking action, we have been the most giving nation, the most helpful to those in time of need, we have chosen to be a blessing to the world over and over, and I'm not just talking about our government, I mean the people of this nation. Not that we are perfect, but we demonstrate our faith by helping others. So don't listen to the revisionist history about how awful America is or the woke mob and all their nonsense. Instead, study the Bible, see the truth. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. If we will continue in God's wisdom, following his path, this country will continue to be blessed for years to come. So we should celebrate the liberty we have, both in the natural and in the spiritual sense. And if we have any fear or misgivings about the future, remember these verses in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4-7. through seven. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Thank God for our freedoms and continue to pray for our country and leaders. We always want and need God involved in the running of our country. Separation of church and state is all about keeping the government out of our churches, not keeping our Christian people out of the government. And remember to celebrate the truest freedom in Jesus, our Lord, who won our liberty for us. John chapter 8, verse 36. Now Jesus is talking about being trapped in sin, and he's saying, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. We should always stand for and fight for our freedoms, spiritual and natural. Both were fought for and bought for a great price. 
So celebrate our Independence Day. That is a wonderful thing. And as we do so, make it a double celebration. Thank God for the liberty he gave us in Jesus, his son. So I want to thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. May God bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.